Um, good morning. You're welcome. I am Mason North Uchide Bube. This lesson uh, is a lesson I'm presenting for Anambra State Teaching on Air, a program approved by His Excellency Chief Willie Obiano, the Executive Governor of Anambra State. It is initiated by our good uh, Honorable Commissioner for Basic Education, Professor Kate Omenuya, a project coordinated by Mr. Patrick Okeke of Post Primary School Service, OKA. Um, take a look at the pictures below. Uh, you will notice that uh, there are shapes inside the circles. And uh, if you count the number of sides these shapes inside the circles are having, you'll find out that all of them have uh, four sides. It has four sides. And the, whenever you find out that a shape is having four sides, the shape is called a quadrilateral. And these quadrilaterals are inside the circle. All the vertices of this quadrilateral are touching the circumference of the circle. Take a good look at the four shapes. You observe that the, circum the vertices of the quadrilateral are touching the circumference of the circle. Okay, if these things happen, it means that the shape is called a cyclic uh, quadrilateral. So whenever the vertices of a quadrilateral, which is inside a circle, are touching the circumference of the circle, it is called a cyclic quadrilateral. This will lead us into a nice topic in mathematics known as circle geometry, with special emphasis on the theorem on cyclic uh, quadrilateral. So uh, the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. This should be our major target in the course of this uh, lesson. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to define a cyclic quadrilateral. You should be also be able to solve problems involving the theorem on cyclic uh, quadrilateral. Okay, now take a look at this uh, shape below. The number of sides of the polygon inside the circle is four. And uh, the point, the point that is, the vertices of this quadrilateral are touching the circumference of a circle. Remember, the circumference of a circle is the line that surrounds a circle. The distance around a circle is the circumference of the circle. And you find out that the vertices of this quadrilateral are touching the circumference of the circle. If such thing happens, the two combination is termed a cyclic quadrilateral. Therefore, a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral whose vertices all lie on a single circle. A cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral whose vertices all lie on a singular circle. Okay, now let us get into the theorem on this uh, cyclic quadrilateral. So this theorem on cyclic quadrilateral is telling us that the opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. What do I mean by supplementary? Two or more angles are said to be supplementary if they sum up to 180 degrees. So this theorem is telling us that if you come to any cyclic quadrilateral, the angles facing each other, when you add them up, it will give you 180 degrees. Take a look at this quadrilateral very well. Observe it. Don't be afraid of it. Just try to take a good observation on the cyclic quadrilateral. You will find out that angle A is facing angle C, and angle B is facing angle D. Therefore, A plus C will give us 180 degrees. Also, B plus D will give us 180 degrees. These are called the opposite angles of a cyclic uh, quadrilateral. So the theorem is telling us that if you get into a, uh, a cyclic quadrilateral, Try to figure out the two angles that are facing each other. Sum them up, it must give you 180 degrees. Okay? Um, having learned the 
theorem very well. Remember what I told you that learning a theorem is just like learning how to drive a car. And if you've learned how to drive a car, you can now comfortably come into the car and drive it. But without learning the theorem, if you try to drive a car, you've not learned how to draw, automatically you must have an accident. That's it. So if you don't go and learn the circle theorem very well, you must have a problem while you try to solve some questions involving the circle uh, theorems. A recap, um, take a look at this quadrilateral again. I'm saying that the two angles facing each other in this cyclic quadrilateral must give us 180 degrees. We call it opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Okay. Now let's take some problems involving these uh, cyclic quadrilaterals. Question number one is telling us to find the value of x in the figure below. O is the center of the circle. Okay, now this is a cyclic quadrilateral because the vertices of this quadrilateral are touching the circumference of the circle. Please, sometimes you will have a four-sided figure which is a quadrilateral, but the vertices will not be touching the circumference of the circle. If the vertices does not touch the circumference of the circle, I repeat, if all the vertices does not touch the circumference of the circle, the, com the combined shape is not a cyclic quadrilateral. So for it to be a cyclic quadrilateral, all the vertices of the uh, quadrilateral must touch the circumference of the circle. Now, one of the angles on the circumference is x. And you find out that this x is facing an angle which is opposite to it at the circumference again. Then this angle, which is opposite to x, we will get it from the previous theorem we've learned before. Remember, angle at center is equal to two times angle at circumference. And the angular center now is 124 degrees. 124 degrees. So the angle at the circumference, which is opposite to X, will now be 160, 124 degrees divided by 2. I have to divide by 2 because angular center is twice angular at circumference. When I divide 124 degrees by 2, I will get 62 degrees. This is the two degrees is the angle at the circumference, right? Because angle at center is twice the angle at circumference. I repeat again, the angle at the center is 124 degrees. So the angle at the circumference, which is facing X, will be 124 degrees divided by two because angle at center must double the one at the circumference. Now you've seen that a theorem can lead into another theorem. We wanted to solve a problem on cyclic quadrilateral, and it referred us back to the previous theorem we've learned, which is angular center is twice angular at circumference. Please don't forget any of this theorem because a question sometimes can lead into four theorems. All right. Therefore, the opposite angles of this cyclic quadrilateral will now be x and 62 degrees. And of course, the sum of opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral must give us 180 degrees. That was why I wrote that x plus 62 degrees equal to 180 degrees. Then, trying to solve for x, the positive 62, when it crosses the other side, it will change to minus. Therefore, x will now be 180 degrees minus 62 degrees automatically we get 118 degrees as a value of uh, x. All right, now let's see the second question. Question number two is telling us to calculate the size of angle ASR. Calculate the size of angle ASR. ASR is the angle which is um, lying on the same straight line where the opposite angle to 80 degrees is lying. All right? So angle PSR is the angle opposite to 80 degrees. Remember, when I say PSR, I mean the angle inside the quadrilateral, which is 
opposite to 80 degrees, the angle is at S. Angle P, S, R. The angle is at S, opposite to 80 degrees. So here, angle P, S, R is opposite to angle 80 degrees. Hence, angle P, S, R will be 180 degrees minus 80. Because the opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral must give us 180 degrees. So if one of the angles is 80 degrees, the other will be 180 minus 80. Because both angles that are facing each other in a cyclic quadrilateral must give us 180 degrees. Hence, angle PSR will be 180 degrees minus 80 degrees. This will give us 100 degrees. All right. So we have got the opposite angle to the 80 degrees, which is inside the quadrilateral, as 100 degrees. But that is not what we want to get. The question says we should get angle ASR. And you will see that line ASP, the straight line ASP is a straight line. Yeah, it's a straight line. And the sum of angles on a straight line must give us 180 degrees. All right? Okay. And the, there are two angles lying on this straight line, which is the angle ASR we are looking for and the angle PSR, which is the opposite angle to 80 degrees in the quadrilateral. And we have got it as 100 degrees. Therefore, both of them must also sum to 180 degrees, angle on a straight uh, line. <laughs> and ASR is equal to 180 degrees minus 100 degrees. This will give us 80 degrees. Remember, the reason is uh, it's not opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral, sorry. It is angles on a straight uh, line, okay? It's a typo. Um, let's take another question. <laughs> question number three. In the figure given below, A, B, C, D, is a cyclic quadrilateral. Of course it is, because all the vertices A, B, C, D are lying on the circumference of the circle. Okay? So, and the angle B, C, D is 100 degrees. You can see. And the angle A, B, D, A, B, D is 50 degrees. We are now asked to find angle A, D, B. A, D, B. That is the angle at D angle ADB. All right. Now consider, I want you to consider triangle ABD. Consider triangle ABD. Triangle ABD has an angle known. And the angle that is known there is 50 degrees. Okay. Now if I'm able to get the angle at A, if I'm able to get the angle at A, it will not help me to get the angle at D. Because in a triangle, once you know two angles, it is quite easy to know the third angle. Okay, because the sum of angles in a triangle must be 180 degrees. Now, angle DAB is the opposite angle of the cyclic quadrilateral. It is facing the angle 100 degrees. Okay, so angle DAB will now be 180 degrees minus 100 degrees which will give us 80 degrees, opposite angles of cyclic uh, quadrilateral. But ADB plus 50 degrees plus DAB will give us 180 degrees, sum of angles of a triangle. Okay? Because a triangle contains three angles, ADB, ABD, and D. A, B. But we have known uh, A, B, D as 50 degrees given. We've also calculated a, D, A, B. D, A, B is that opposite angles of the cyclic quadrilateral, which we saw to be 80 degrees. Then to get angle A, D, B, we simply need to add the 50 degrees and 80 degrees and remove it from 180 degrees. Hence, Angle ADB will be 50 degrees plus 80 degrees, which is equal to 180 degrees. Now, the 
the plus positive 50 and positive 80 we cross the quality sign once they cross the quality sign they change to minus that was why we have that angle adb is now 180 degrees minus 80 degrees minus 50 degrees of course this will also give us 50 degrees so angle adb is 50 degrees okay so it's quite simple you just need to learn the theorem once you understand the theorem solving problems on this will no longer be a trouble to you let's take just one more question okay this is a, this is a jump question 2005 o is the center of the circle find the size of angle ruo they so said we should find the size of angle ruo angle ruo okay this one this one is quite tricky very simple okay let's go into this you will see that angle out is equal to angle otu you take a look at that cyclic quadrilateral you will see a triangle there in which one of the angle is 70 degrees that is triangle out now you can observe that the two sides of the triangle moves from the center to the circumference that is from line OU is a radius and line OT is also a radius. You can pause this video to understand the particular thing and you can play it to understand it again. So uh, if, you, if you think you're not getting it properly, just pause it, try to look at it, visualize properly and get a point you want to get, then you continue by playing it again. All right, so line OU and line OT are all radius of the circle right and the radius is equal to a radius and if such is so it means that the two sides of the triangle are equal and whenever the two sides of a triangle are equal it is now an isosceles triangle and in every isosceles triangle the base angles must be equal the base angles are the angle at u and the angle at t that was why i said that angle o u t when I say OUT, I mean the angle at the center. And the angle at the center is U. So angle OUT is equal to angle OTU. All right? And uh, the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. One angle of the triangle is already 70. So I have to remove that 70 from 180 degrees. If I remove 70 from 180 degrees, it means that the angle that is left is 110 degrees. Which means the angle at U and the angle at T both are sharing the 110 degrees. That is why you saw here that angle OUT is equal to angle OTU, which is 180 degrees minus 70 degrees all over 2. When I subtract 180 from, when I subtract 70 from 180, I will have 110 degrees. Then dividing 110 degrees by two will give me 55 degrees because the base angles of isosceles triangle are equal. So angle OUT is 55 degrees. Remember, this 55 degrees is one of the angles inside the triangle. But this angle RUT as a whole is opposite to angle 100 degrees which is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. And remember, opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral must sum up to 180 degrees. So angle RUT will be 180 degrees minus 100 degrees, which will give us 80 degrees because opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral must give us 180 degrees. Angle RUT as a whole is facing 100. So I have to remove that 100 from 180. Makana, any two angles facing each other in a cyclic quadrilateral must give us 180 degrees. That is why I will remove 100 from 180 to get 80. So the angle at angle RUT is now 80 degrees. But the question wants us to get angle RUO. And the angle RUO plus angle OUT is equal to that 80 degrees. You can see that the radii UO, that is the line UO, 
divided that angle 80 degrees into two parts. And one part is inside the triangle, which we found to be 55 degrees. So the other part, which is RUO we are looking for, will now be 80 degrees minus 55 degrees. It will give us 25 uh, degrees, right? Uh, by now, I'm quite certain that you must have uh, um, understood the opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral vividly, okay? Expect another theorem next time. In summary, a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral whose vertices all lie on a single circle. When you find out that the vertices of a quadrilateral are all lying on the circumference of a circle, you know that the combined shape is a cyclic quadrilateral. There are several circle theorems of which we've discussed one today. Um, knowing this theorem will help you in no small way in tackling problems involving the theorems. Okay, I'll give you an assignment at this point for you to test if you've actually understood what we've discussed today. Find the values of x in the figures below. Of course, you can see the figures below. There are two figures there. In each of them, try to find out the values of uh, x. All right, if you're able to get it right, it means that you automatically understand these, uh, understood uh, this uh, uh, theorem on cyclic uh, quadrilateral. Don't be afraid, you can still have my email, my number, or Facebook page for further contact with me if you are uh, troubled or if you have a problem somewhere. You can reach me via my WhatsApp number 070 6839 or my email address, shuksesonofu at gmail.com, or my Facebook page, Esonofu Chukshudebube. So you can try to do this assignment. After doing it, forward it to my mail or number. I'll give you a feedback, I promise. Thank you so much at this point. I remain your friend, Esonofu Chidebube, from Community High School.